happy Friday. Like I always say, the only day of the week we can say happy Friday to. We're so excited to be here with you guys today. Thanks for joining our Show Me You Know Me webinar on all things Show Me You Know Me. I'm Sam McKenna. I'm the CEO of Hashtag Sam Sales Consulting. If this is the first time you are coming to us, welcome. I am joined by Catherine, our Chief of Staff and Head of Customer Success, and Paige, who is our Head of Marketing, who's responsible for all the lovely emails that you guys see hopefully today on Fridays and full of gifts and funny comments. And we're super excited to have you guys. Thank you so much also to Owler for being our first sponsor of our incredible webinar um, this month. We're very, very excited to have you guys. Owler is a technology I'm super familiar with. It is one that I used in the very early days of my selling to do Show Me You Know Me. So we're really stoked to have full circle uh, participation. So thank you, Owler team, for, for your sponsorship and our and support of us. Um, we're going to talk about a bunch of things before we get into that. Just a couple of things. If you are brand new to us, we are a sales consultancy. We do everything from sales trainings to uh, secret writing to branding executives on LinkedIn to SKO speeches and everything in between. Uh, we also, for anybody um, that is looking for their own kind of journey for professional development, we have a great set of shorts, what we call our SAM shorts on our website. You can go to shorts.samsalesconsulting.com, uh, use the link that you'll see dropped in uh, in the chat. And we, of course, always have a discount code. They are so worth it, in my humble opinion. We'll give you so much education to make you an outstanding SDR, outstanding AE, and yes, even an outstanding leader in case you're looking for some things to train your teams on. Um, we're an all-women team also of 11, um, so just really cool to, to mention that as well. I'm very, very proud of that um, for our company. So uh, now we're going to dive into things. So we're we're going to highlight a, a bunch of you guys to give your live questions, show your emails, um, do all sorts of things with us. But I want to talk about the concept of show me, you know me first. It is framed back here on my wall. It is also very important, as is Urgent Bird Gets Warm. And yes, there's a pineapple, which stands for hospitality. But let's just talk about Show Me You Know Me while we are at it today. Show Me You Know Me is really the idea of understanding who our buyers are, who they are as humans, what's going on with their company, what's happening in their vertical, what's happening in their space overall. It's the art of doing our research and coming to the table as experts. Now, you might be a brand new BDR who has been working in sales for 16 minutes and you're like, I'm not an expert on anything yet. Or you might be a seller who's been doing this for 30 years. But what we want to think about, right, no matter what stage of your career you're in, we want to be able to do our research on people to show that we've actually given a little bit of time and a little bit of attention to who they are before we do our outreach. And the beautiful part about Show Me You Know Me is it impacts every single um, outreach that you do from the very first email all the way to when you've had a client for 20 years. So think about a couple of things, right? The bar is pretty low for sales when it comes to Show Me You Know Me. And what buyers expect is probably what you might be sending what you might be receiving in your inbox. And it's things that have super salesy subject lines, super salesy one-liners like, hope this finds you well, hope you're doing great, happy Monday, no such thing, right? Really sub salesy subject lines that then give you marketing content in those emails. It's not uh, personalized to you. It says nothing about a, an authentic connection between you and the individual, shows no homework that you've done. And it was basically copied and pasted to you and 500 of, of your closest friends. And the only thing that might've been personalized is your name, the company, or something like that. Yesterday, I got an email that said, I see you're based in Baltimore. Psst, I'm not. I'm in Washington, D.C. Close, though. Nice try. Um, and, you know, we want to do business with you. We also see people who write, we would like to work with Sam Sales Consulting, LLC, in capital letters. Would we ever write that? No. So great giveaways that you haven't done your research and you're using full automation. Instead, right, the idea of Show Me You Know Me is before you do outreach, particularly to like your manager level and above buyers, Go on your LinkedIn profile. Go and see if there's anything there that you can ascertain that you can connect with them on. Go on their website. See if they've published articles. What's happening with their company? Has this executive been on podcasts? Is there anything you can pull up? And I'll tell you one of my favorite kind of success stories here on the idea of Show Me You Know Me, which, by the way, will absolutely pay off for you and will get you responses from buyers who say, the only reason I'm responding it's because you took the time to personalize. I promise this will happen for you. But my favorite success story is from one of our dearest clients, been a client of ours for almost three years, spoke at their sales kickoff last year, talked about SKO, but a very senior uh, sales rep uh, who's been in sales for about 20 years who walked away and said, no way that stuff works. And then he's like, okay, let me give it a shot. And so one of the accounts that had ghosted him for six months, he found, found the person that had ghosted him, listened to her podcast for 10 minutes, Pulled a line out of the quote, 
threw it in the subject line. She responded in less than 10 minutes and booked the meeting with him. And he was like, what the hell just happened? And we're like, we know, rinse, repeat, go do it again. And he did it. And he did it again with three different accounts and got the exact same result. In fact, he is a testimonial on our website. We promise he is a real person and not just a figment of our imagination. This can work for you too. What I would tell you really, and again, this is tough in our in our sales climate because a lot of you work for leaders that value quantity over quality. So I would tell you, if that's the case, if you have to send 100 emails a day or make 100 cold calls, figure out how to hit your KPIs and then put in a little extra credit. Take time to send 10 emails that are hyper-personalized. Send 20 or 30 hyper-personalized emails a week and watch and wait and see the results that come in. Because what's going to happen is your open rate will no, no matter what, if you personalize your emails in their subject line, your open rate will skyrocket. Number two, if your email is good, your reply rate will also skyrocket. And your bosses will eventually come to you and say, what is it that you're doing different? And you'll be like, I'm glad you asked. And then you can tell them about show me or know me. Now we can go into a ton of different things, emails, how we work this into leadership, what we do with clients to go above and beyond. But I will stop talking for a brief second. I will pop over to whoever is in line to ask our first question and to be spotlit. And please, you guys, if you have questions, feel free to submit them in the, the Q&A. We would love your questions, although we have a whole heck of a lot you guys submitted in advance. So hopefully we can get through everything. Hi, Haley. How's it going? Hello. I Hello. Do of course I should. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, nice to speak to you in you person. In person, uh, yes. Kind of in person. Uh, and thanks for inviting me. Yeah. So my question is, I am a Canadian and I sell mainly into the US and I always hear you should personalize about the, the local sports team or the college you went to and it doesn't work for me. Can't do it. Doesn't <laughs> really sound very authentic. <laughs> so what to do? Yes. So what to do? So I have tools at my disposal, obviously sales navigator. I can search the internet. I can look up blog posts. You can find people's YouTube videos that can be kind of creepy. How do I not be creepy? How do I be authentic? How do I like hit the nail on the head? Sometimes it's really hard. Cool. I think, um, hello, hello. Thanks for joining us from Canada. Always excited to meet a new Canadian face. Um, I will say a couple of things. So one, let, let, be, let LinkedIn be your very first place to do any of this research, right? And I will tell you, if it is on LinkedIn, if the person has posted about it, recently. If it's on their LinkedIn profile, it is fair game. I say recently because it will be very creepy if they post quite a bit and you pull something from like six years ago, you'll be like, you should really dig for that stuff, right? Even if they posted just one post six years ago, it can be a little dodgy if you don't present it correctly. Anything that's recent and anything that's on a LinkedIn profile is fair game. I'm actually going to pull an experience from Paige when Paige was expecting her first little peanut. Um, uh, and she she came to us and said, you know, this person listed on their LinkedIn profile that they are a dad, they're a proud dad. Can I talk about this? Can I write this in an email? Can I say that I'm expecting a baby? What can I do? Is that fair game? And it totally was. And Paige will just nod as I say this, but she wrote about that. And the person wrote back and he was like, let me give you some, some first time parenting tips, right? What an awesome way to just create an authentic human connection. I think a lot of people make a mistake in thinking about that show me, you know me and personalization that it must be related to work. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't have to be. So there's a reason you're reaching out and we're going to get to the core of that reason in the email. But if you see something like they traveled somewhere, they've got a particular picture in their background, or let's say you did go to the same school or a rival school, you can make a joke if you're cheeky about it. But even incorporating just authentic human stuff, right? And then making sure we extend that a little bit. I'll talk about that in a second is totally okay. When you do talk on that about that human stuff, right? Imagine the difference if Paige had said, I see you're a dad. Cool. Do you want to buy our stuff? Yeah. It would come off a little bit the wrong way. What about it, right? So make sure whatever it is you connect on, there's some threads there, right? Think about it like you're having a conversation. We'd never say that like, I see you're a dad. And then just sit there. If we're at a networking table together, we would talk about that. So make sure you do that. Again, anything on LinkedIn, totally fair game articles, podcasts, conferences they've spoken at, anything that's, I think, within the last six months is also totally fair. Um, so feel free to pick that. If they are big on TikTok, right? If they have a huge amount of YouTube videos on things they coach on, go for it. If they are not big on TikTok or don't have that, right? Don't look at that kind of stuff. Um, don't look at their personal Facebook pictures, Instagram, things like that. Also very, very creepy. So don't do that stuff. Try to keep it as professionally based as you possibly can, right? 
If you find nothing, think this is a great place where Aller can kick in, right? Using Aller to create all these notifications that you have, right? On the businesses you're trying to target, companies you're trying to look for, companies who recently got funding, they can send you all these alerts. And here's the thing that I love, right? Whether you're using this through Aller alerts or whether you're simply doing a Google search, you're going to get information about something that is going on with that company from their site in the press and whatever. Take that information, right? We call this a compelling event, right? You've probably heard that in sales before. But the advice that I would give you when you use a compelling event, make sure it's not the exact same compelling event that everybody uses. So funding, for an example, right? Or like when we were trying to um, help a client target Tesla and everybody was saying like, congrats on making the S&P 500, right? You and everybody else. So how do you stand out and how do you be? Di- how are you different? Take that compelling event, go one layer down, read through the news article, right? Pull one other piece out, take a quote that their executive said, throw that in the subject line. You know, your re- your CEO recently said this, your CRO, I loved your CRO's piece in this. For anybody that reports to that C-suite, to that SVP, to that whatever, even if it's not that person that you're targeting, is going to be like, my, C- my boss did what? And they're going to open up that email. And that's a great way to connect. Final thing, and then I'll take a breath. Um, Make sure too, if you are saying something about the company, the space, a a new thing, you know, that they're trying to achieve as a company, what an amazing opportunity for you to show your intelligence and connect the dots. I love that you guys are doing this modern piece in marketing. I've been talking about how important this is for so long because of X, Y, Z. Now I could wax poetic about that forever, but the real reason I reached out is to sell you some stuff said more tactfully than that. But it's a great way to do that. Show me and know me and then segue into the real meat of your email. Okay. Um, <laughs> that that was a lot to take notes. <laughs> Good luck. It's recorded. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I have an account that I'm working on. Let's hear it. And, okay. So here's the situation. My CEO went to a big conference called the Home Care 100. My company sells education technology to home care providers. And um, he went to this big conference. He met the CEO and COO of an organization. They had a really lovely conversation over dinner. They sat together. My CEO was like, I know you, right? This should be easy. My CEO had a kosher meal. They were talking about the kosher meal. I sent an email called kosher training. I connected all the dots. I did all the things. Okay. Nothing. Crickets are chirping. So I need to go one layer down in this organization because clearly this is not a priority as it was made out to be at dinner, but it's something. There's something there. So what what better to what better to build rapport on than kosher meals? Um you know. Know, here's what I would just say to you real quick. Actually, I wouldn't go one layer down. Um this is a great lesson in just executive branding and matching. How how have you instilled your leadership to reach back out to those C suites and say, let me introduce you to Haley and still nothing? Yeah. What? Yeah, I know. Okay. I know. It's it is <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, Let's I'll see show the email. you. So the email is not, I don't think terrible. Like the first email, was, it's a pleasure making your acquaintance. My CEO, James Cohn was sitting next to John at the home care 100 and they got to talking. John James was the fellow with the kosher meal. Hence the subject line of this email that said kosher in this case just means that we have the right training to meet your requirements. I can't resist a pun. That's so cute. I'm cute. I can be adorable. Sometimes. You're cute. Yeah. <laughs> so, but like, yeah, so James asked me to connect with the two of you to learn a bit about your compliance training might be a great fit for Acris caregivers. He mentioned your nonprofit with about 10,000 caregivers and you use CanTime. Uh, we're this close to integration with them. How are you currently meeting compliance needs? Let me know if it makes sense to have a conversation when you're back from the conference. Have an amazing time. Make lots of friends. Are you tracking open rates, et cetera, here? Do we see, do we know what's happening? Yeah, yeah so it, they each opened it. Nothing. Okay. Then I wrote, <sighs> mm-hmm. yeah. you know, wrote again. I could write now because now we have that integration with can time. So that could be, that's my next email. Can I just see just real quick, your subject line again, it was kosher training plus what? What, what is it? Kosher, just kosher training, re-kosher training. Okay, cool. Why don't you, um, so two quick tips here um, and then we'll, we'll scoot on to the next question. Let's take before the RE of your subject line. So we always try to think about after we send a few emails, especially great ones, right. And we're not getting any kind of response. Try to think, okay, like what else is, what else is necessary here? So try to put another hook before the RE. So I would say right before the RE, just say um, your, your, your dinner with 
um, our CEO at XYZ, something like that, right? Not, not even, yeah, don't even worry about the, the work stuff, just do the personal stuff. Because maybe even though they opened it, maybe they were like, well, okay, bye. Just put that front and center and then see if that works. If not, the second thing that I would say, and I'm sure you are, um, have you already connected with both of them on LinkedIn? I have not. Cool. Do the connection points, right? And just make sure for anybody listening, make sure every time you send a connection request, there's context in there. So there's a personalized message. I will just say for anyone who's like, I love the volume game. I'm just going to just connect with everybody with absolutely no text in there. That's great. Um, Here's the thing that you want to think about. What happens next, right? So if you send a blind connection request and the person accepts then what? What are you saying next? You're going to pitch slap them or you would introduce yourself in the same way that you would in the initial connection request. So just put the effort in in the connection request, set yourself up to be somebody different and of the likelihood that they're going to accept, especially if it's an executive. And I would just say, John, I heard you had an, an amazing dinner, amazing kosher meal um, with our CEO, et cetera. I've sent you a few notes. I'd really appreciate the chance to talk to you and Susan about yada, yada, yada. Let me know if you're ever open for a conversation. I will just say too, this is the exact same vernacular I will give all of you guys for how to do the LinkedIn connection request. It is really important that you have that in there. We want to make sure it's not salesy. We want to make sure it's not overly aggressive, very light, very easy. So um, should be good there. Okay. I can do those things. Okay. Keep us posted, Haley. We're invested now. We want to know what happens. We want to know what happens with the kosher meal. Okay, he didn't uh, have the kosher meal. My boss had the <laughs> Okay. Uh, I will just say as we bring on the, the next guest, um, fantastic job with the humor too, right? Like I think a lot of people often, it needs to be authentic, right? And it's it's completely authentic to who you are. You can't do that if you're going to show up to a call and be like, hello, excited to talk to you when they come on, right? Like your personality online needs to match your actual personality, but don't be afraid to be yourself, right? Like bring that personality out. You can be yourself and humorous while still being professional. Um, I pride myself on doing that. We're kindred spirits, Sir Harley. So great, great work there. Thank you. Yeah. I, my favorite, just, I want to tell you guys, my favorite thing is when I see somebody snooping my profile on LinkedIn, when I don't like when I, I've never spoken to them before I reached out, I always write back with a connection request and it says, caught you peeking and everybody <laughs> is letting you know. Okay. I love it. Thanks. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks. Haley. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Um, that's good humor. Hi, Jason. How's it going? Hi, it's going good. Sorry, I'm okay. still figuring out how Zoom works. And You're getting well, off mute. welcome. Welcome to the 90s, Jason. We're happy to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me on. Uh, what's your question? Let's hear it. So in a email sequence or an outreach sequence in general, I'm starting with the show me, you know me email. Cool. After that, say I don't get a response. How many, how many emails do you put into your sequences and how many of those are manual, sh continual show me, you know me style emails versus just personalization at scale style emails? Cool. I have it. So one great job on doing the show me, you know me and the manual email is the first step. I think that's really critical. Um, I've got a couple of opinions on sequences and then a couple tips to give you there. Um, I, I wholeheartedly believe that the sequences that are written for any sales teams that are sending them out, and this isn't just a plug for our line of business. Yes, we do this, but I truly believe that they should be written by somebody number one with a sales brain. So don't have your marketing team do this. Do not let every SDR and AE on the planet write your own sequences. Have somebody that know, has a sales brain, understands how to write and copy edit, and also understands the logistics and the data that are involved with sequencing. This is something that we constantly stay on top of, and there's a lot of changing data, shorter, longer, different timing, what to do, where, hire an expert, whether it's us or a hundred other shops that, that do that. The second thing I would say, just a couple of quick tips. So I would have, you know, our recommendation always is that 85% of your sequences are completely written for you. So everything's done except for that email one, right? So let's say okay. email two down, pre-written, written specifically for that buyer persona, et cetera. Email one. 85% of that email is written and the 15% that kicks in, right? That authentic voice from you, BDR, AE, BP, whatever is where the show me, you know me kicks in, right? So that subject line is going to be whatever the hell you come up with for that one individual. And then that the rest of that email, right? The show me, you know me piece, right? It'll be like whatever you got in your Aller notification, whatever you pulled from Google search, the podcast you listened to, the quote you pulled, whatever it is. Yep. 
when you do that, right, again, you've got that email that goes out, but I would just tell you that second email, this is where I see one of the biggest mistakes being made. If you take the time to do show me, you know me in the first email, just think about the buyer's perspective, right? That buyer, you might send it out at 11.59 a.m. right before they're about to hop on a Sam Sales webinar. You send that out. They open it up. They're reading it and they're like, this is great. Boom. Our webinar starts. They've completely forgotten about you. So what you want to think about with that, right, is if we did a good enough job in email one, we don't want to, we don't need to do a lot of work in email two. So number one, email two should come out less than 48 hours before, after email one. So do a quick hit and then introduce no new information in there, right? I want to send you that second email and say, Jason, it's Sam again, hoping you saw my first email. I'd still have the chance to chat. If you're up for it, let me know what times and dates work for you. The thing that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get you, Jason, to open up that email and be like, oh, shit, that's right. Oh, sorry. I cursed one time. Well, hell, it was the second time. Anyway, (laughs) um, I want you to read that email and I want you to be like, I meant to respond. That's right. I don't want you to have to read a novel and get distracted again. I just want to be like, Jason, reply. And then you're like, okay. And then you do. Second, just quick tip there. Think about your executives. Friday is a great day to do this, right? Thursday and Friday, we try to prioritize the timing of, of executive communications on those days. Why? Because we're going to write really great emails on Thursday and Friday. Less than 48 hours after Thursday or Friday is going to be, you guessed it, Saturday or Sunday. And that's when our second just popping an email. It is a quick hit. It's a quick hello. The odds of getting a response on that weekend from that executive who is has less competition for their time, right? Might be at their kid's 19th ballet recital as riveting as that is. They might also be checking their email and looking for a distraction and then we'll get a response. So key there. Final thing I would mention, semantics really, well, I'm lying, two more things to mention. Semantics really matter in this. So the positioning, the words we use, et cetera, but also kind of like the the impression that we give our buyers um, of us. And one of the things that I would think about, right, is the link to schedule time with you. It is, everybody has an opinion and it is very black and white for everybody. My, my, you know, very ferocious opinion on this is never, ever, ever send a calendar link in your outbound emails. Ever. You are being presumptuous. You are putting the work and the onus on that buyer who's reading it and you're communicating something about yourself. You're like, here's my link, schedule time with me. Ugh. Even when they respond, right? And they say, thanks so much for this meeting. I would love to meet with you. Keep in mind, I never, I just never will use that calendar link in, be, in the, the beginning. And here's why. Again, you're putting the onus on the buyer. It's very, you know, like you do the work, but I also have a ton of internal meetings and none of that matters. The only thing that matters is when you are available and when you can meet with me. So if I send them my calendar link, they're going to work through, you know, my daily massages, my nail appointments, just kidding. They're going to work through all my internal meetings as well. And I don't want them to do that. I want them, you just tell me when you're free and I'll make it happen. So keep that in mind. Final thing. Um, the win for us is a it, you know, the win for us as sellers, obviously, is getting the meeting. However, right, not everybody is ready to buy. Not everybody is ready to have a meeting with us. So you want to think about those 30 or 40% of of buyers who are in a cycle that are just kind of evaluating things, looking to learn. At some point, they'll get there. So the win also for us as sellers is not that immediate meeting, but it's thinking about the rest of our emails. How do we intrigue them enough, right, in that sequence to eventually click on a link that goes to our website that lets us capture their, their email and now... We have two voices going to them, your sales voice in the sequence and the marketing voice as well. I lied. One more thing. Here's the other thing that I would change in your subject line. So the only time where I would bring another manual stop, let's say on email five or six or 19, it takes a lot of touches to to get somebody's attention. But let's say on that note, like let's say you're having a webinar, there's some kind of event you want to invite them to, an executive branding thing. You're going to be in their city. Um, Sometimes they will say that I'm in their city, even if I'm not going to be in their city, which is caught me in trouble before because it was a 700 person population city, but that's okay. Anyway, so make sure you're truthful there. Um, But write that kind of like what we just did with Haley before the RE, visiting Atlanta next week, free for a meeting. Make sure that compelling event is in the front and that'll be something to to do as a manual step. Excellent. (laughs) I'm always ready. There's going to be a recording, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, if, if this is your first time joining a webinar as you as you will learn this is we try to pack in as much punch as we possibly can in the hour. Um give you one tip to use and then come back to to gain the rest later. This is my first one but this is awesome. Thank you very okay. much. Thanks Jason. Glad to have you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks. Um 
I do. I feel like we should track this. Like how many, how many calories I burn on these webinars? Uh, I'm talking so fast. <laughs> Hi, Sanji. How are you? Oh, you're on mute. So I'm sure you're saying something lovely. I was just saying, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, so I had a quick uh, thought. So I'm, I'm fully remote. I don't travel around to go see my customers or anything like that. Uh, if I do, it's it's infrequent and it depends on deal size. So okay. yep. 50K and up maybe, uh, mm -hmm. I might go see them. But so my target ICP, so I sell to state and local government, uh, oh. typically working with athletic directors or parks and rec directors to help them with their weather safety. Cool. Um yeah. So I actually <laughs> asked you a question uh, when you did the LinkedIn webinar with. I feel um, like I remember this. I, re yeah. I remember your, I remember your, your company. Yeah. We don't, yeah. We don't get a lot of weather safety. Um. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's pretty <laughs> unique. Uh, it, it's interesting because you have like sensors that's constantly detecting for weather and then alerts people when bad weather is close by. Cool. So I'm trying to help athletic directors keep their student athletes, their staff and their visitors safe from lightning and heat stress. So I have an email. Can I share? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, let's see what you got. Okay, so this is a templated email off of outreach. Um, I have it on the review side, so it's easier to read. Um, essentially, I did what you were saying just a moment ago, where you have that first initial email and then everything else is just sequenced out. So really the only manual step is this first line that where I'm supposed to be going and finding something relevant about them on uh, LinkedIn or, or just on Google. The yeah. problem is that sometimes park direct directors and athletic directors don't have anything online. So how do you find something relevant about them or, or would I then just rely on their, the organization or how, what are your I thoughts? Think I think this is a challenge for, so I have a couple of, of notes about your, your email, which long time, long time Sam sales listeners will, will probably be able to do this even better than I will um, give you feedback on your email. But let me tell you just a couple things here. Um, in terms of the show me, you know me, we have lots of areas, um, lots of verticals and spaces and buyers who have nothing on LinkedIn, right? Sometimes they don't even picture and they have two followers and we're like, oh, great, thanks for the help. So this is just where I would employ, right? The, the information about their space, their organization, the park, um, their team, right? Something like that as your show me, you know me and the subject line. So can, you know, especially if you're going after park directors, what can you see on the website? You know, is there like something you can pick up from like an animal cam that they have athletic directors? Is there something, you know, that was recently published about their team or whatever? Consider too, like what they personally care about, right? Like athletic directors are going to be all excited that somebody's celebrating their win. Hopefully their win, if not just stick to the, the win and one, the win teams is your ICP. But that's the stuff that I think you can pull in. I would say subject line, we definitely want to take this away. So kind of think about think about these two things, right? The preview text of your email is what's so, so important. And your preview text is your subject line plus that first sentence. So if we put these two things together and we say, this is a sales email, right? If, you, if it is so apparent, you won't get an open. So if I see quick call, I see that you're the CEO at Sam Sales. I'll open those anyway, because we always look for fodder for our bad email decks, um, full transparency. But most people won't. They'll just immediately delete because they're like, I don't want to be sold to. Imagine the difference, right? If you said like, so you said something about like, I don't know, a named animal that they have in their park or something like that, or like, I don't know, maybe they work for the DC Zoo and they just had like a panda born or whatever it is. Saying something like that or naming the animal or whatever it is in your subject line and then saying, Sam. I tell you, I thought this was so great. I saw this on your site, yada, yada, something about it. So not just I saw it, but here's what I think about it, or here's my thoughts, et cetera. Now, while I could talk to you about that all day, the real thing that I wanted to reach out to you was about XYZ. And the thing that I think to think of here is when you read the rest of your email, you want to think, again, always putting ourselves in the shoes of the buyer. What's the buyer going to think? So if you think about this, we help leaders like you mitigate the risk of bad weather for people at your school. Don't need you. I already have that. If they said that, what would we say back, right? This is what we call at Sam Sales the, the hidden or the forthcoming objection. And it's really important to get around that in the email. So if I say like, hey, so we can train your, your sales teams on how to be awesome. We already have that. 
Cool. Thanks. Bye. What's different about me? Why should you talk to me? Why should you give us time? What is it that we're going to do differently to make impact? So I think about that. We help leaders. I would say like we help organizations, we help parks, we help whatever, right? Mitigate the risk of bad weather for people at your school. You probably already have something like this in place, but here's an angle you might not have considered. Here's why a lot of our clients switch gears from their existing platform to this. Give them something that 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 reason has to be something they specifically care about. So that's tying it specifically to that buyer persona, right? And I'll say just real quick, kind of thinking about different different um, verticals. So think about this: if we, if I sell, let's say, if I'm trying to get the attention of a CFO and then let's say, you know, a junior accountant and everything in between. I don't want to write a CFO the same thing I'd write a junior accountant. I need to change my so what. So think about that in your emails, right? What's the objection they're going to give? And is the so what appropriate and tangible enough for that buyer? The whole idea of our email, right, is to make sure that we bait them not sell them. So this is the information, right? Again, like I, I love, I'm all about efficiency. So making sure that we have alerts set up, making sure again, like we have things like, like Allo, which may or may not have connections for, for park systems, but that information where I can just scan through, let me say this also, if I can scan through and I can see 20 updates about 20 different companies that I'm going through, if I can scan through like that, like in an hourly email, I can just boom, boom. Oh, and this is like, I looked at mine today. This is what happened with Zoom. This is what's going on with TransUnion. This is what's happening with Nielsen IQ. And I can immediately go off and send nurture emails that are manual, right? So that efficiency in data is really helpful. Hmm. Last thing, um, we're, oh, you go by Sunny. That's cute. I like that. Um, we're just saying Thanks. that at the bottom. Um, okay. I, I I know that there's probably a specific vernacular around this, and I need to learn what it is. I don't know why we taught the, are you opposed to a 15-minute call on Monday or Tuesday? I don't know where the opposed piece, like, would you object Chris, to? Chris Voss. Okay. Um, I'll steal from Todd Capone there. I don't know why we take negotiation training from a hostage <laughs> negotiator for sales. Like, <laughs> what the hell? I, I know some of you are probably Chris Voss fans. You're like, die, Sam. Chris Voss is amazing. But... <laughs> Don't do any of that. Would you be, would you take out that language, right? Would you ever say that to someone, right? If I met you and was like, Sonny, would you be opposed to taking a meeting with me about this? You'd be like, what the hell is happening here? So why would we say that in an email? Take that out and just say, I'd love the chance to chat more. Let me know if you have time over the next week or two and I'll send a calendar and invite along accordingly. Final okay. just tweak there, week or two. We know that they are busy, right? So I think even just by changing that, making less salesy and also being like, we're here when you're ready. It's fine. People will probably say next week, but even just adding that or two just shows a little bit more uh, buyer centricity versus selfish appeal. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> That's very, very good. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, okay. I guess for the, for the week or two, maybe I'll just focus on the last part that you talked about. Yeah. Um, do you find that when you use that, that majority of the times you're getting a realistic response that, hey, yeah, I'd love to meet next week or in two weeks. And then that meeting sticks. Because one of the things that I found was if I don't do it within the next day or two, sometimes the meeting doesn't always stick. So maybe there might be something going wrong with the the hook or, or the initial value prop that I gave to them. But what's your... Um, I can't confidently give you data on on that. I can just give you my my opinion. I think if we if we made enough meaningful impact in the email, the meeting will stick. I think a couple of things you can do to help it stick, right? Um, when you send that invite, we've talked about this before. Our standard Sam sales practice in a in subject line might also be your your kicker here. Um, people will write initial call for the subject line. And I'm like, what the hell call is on my calendar? So just one thing, um, always put your name first, right? So the name of your organization, AEM, um, I put AEM plus whatever the, no, yes. Yes, AEM, um, plus their company name and then call in initial call or initial conversation about XYZ and then put in a quick agenda. Um, Make sure the reason I always put our name first, right, which you'll see if you get an invite from us, is that every single time they're on their calendar, they're going to see our name. So it's a great little like unknown lever to pull and way to nurture somebody. Um, and then you can set the agenda in in that, right? Here's what I'd love to cover. I'd love to tell you a few mm -hmm. things about us. But moreover, 
I'd love to hear about your challenges with managing this, right? How you're tracking bad weather right now, issues you possibly had. I'd love to use this time together to learn about you and then figure out how we can be a great fit for you. You are identifying that the conversation is going to be a discovery call and that they should come prepared to share information, that this is not a demo because it shouldn't be a demo. That's really good. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Sunny. Thank great, so to, great to meet you. Thanks for, well, great to meet you again. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. Have, have a good day. Okay, next up, we have an anonymous question. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm a leader and would love to know how I can incorporate show me, you know me into my leadership style. So here's the cool thing. I think show me again, like I said, show me, you know me applies to very first touch in an email all the way to when we've had a client for 10 years. Show me, you know me applies to every other relationship that you have in your life, right? So your partner, your husband, your neighbor, your kids, your team that you lead. And just think about this. Like, what do we, what do we know about our clients? What do we know about our people? What is it that we've taken the time to learn about them? Right. And I'll tell you a lot of leaders, this might be why this question is coming in. A lot of leaders, right. Are, don't know anything about their teams. A lot of leaders don't even know the names of their direct reports, partners, spouses, significant others. Take the time to learn this, right? And we only have in, we only have so much room in our heads. Write this down. Create a sheet, right? We've got a little book of of creepy facts about our clients and people, right? When somebody shares with you something, their favorite place to eat dinner, like a you know, I don't know, dream pair of shoes that they want, a goal that they have for buying their first house, whatever that might be. Write that down. Make sure you remember it, right? Because I love, I love the way that we can tie that together to just show we care. It's not gimmicky if you have it written down and you have to refer to your notes. Like again, you might have four or five reports. You might be a second or a third line manager who manages 50 or 60 or 100 people. And you're like, I'm not gonna be able to manage all of that, right? But start with your front line and just understand more about them, right? What do you know about their personal life? Have you written it down? What goals do they have? What motivates them? Were they sick this weekend? Have they made an appointment for urgent care? What do we know? Catherine's <laughs> like, hello. What do we know about them, right? And then the other thing that I would say is like, this is, um, this might also just seem a little contrived, but we all have so much going on in our lives, right? Again, whether we're leaders, parents, like we have, you know, taking care of our elderly parents, whatever, you have a lot going on and we need a little help in terms of remembering things. So I would also say when you have that show me, you know me, when you hear something about someone, um, Put a note in your calendar to follow up on it, right? Uh, I've talked about this before. You know, Carol and our team, her son was sick, you know, overseas with the lovely COVID that we have all gone through. Um, so I just set a reminder to check in on her two weeks, two weeks, two days later. Um, somebody on our team, Kim, mentioned her fans were out and she was, you know, burning up in her house in Hawaii. Poor Kim in Hawaii. Um, but I'm just setting a note, right, on my calendar to remember to check up in a couple of days. And how's it going? People will feel so special because you just, not only that you cared enough to ask, but even more so that you cared to set a reminder on your calendar. They don't have to know that, by the way. Obviously, they don't know. Um, but that you cared enough to follow up and just check in, right? I will say, we've talked about this too. Don't forget to show me you know me to your leaders. They also would like you to know, be checked in on every so once in a while, right? What a great way to, to form a relationship with them and understand those same things about them too. Thanks, Paige. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up, we have Matt Brown coming on live. Hi, Matt Brown. How's it going? Hey, it's going well. How are you? Hey, come on. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Thanks for doing the webinar. It's great. You bet. So I'm going to change my question because my initial question, I think, has been answered at length. Cool. Um, but that's fine because I prepared another one just in case. The old bait and, the old bait and switch. I love it. Let's, <laughs> let's hear what you got. <laughs> So I, I think the question I'll ask now is um, I'm really interested to get your perspective on scaling. Show me, you know me, just mm. because on our team, a number of our reps have pretty extensive account lists, like up to a hundred. Um, and we do some segmentation there to hone in on top priority accounts. But obviously if you're reaching out to, you know, anywhere from four to seven people at an individual account and you multiply that by a hundred accounts, it's it's a lot of scaling to do. So would love to get your thoughts on how you scale. Show me, you know me when you have a big target list. Yeah. I think, I think one of the first things like you, you hit the nail on the head that many don't do, which seems so one-on-one, but is, is account segmentation. So 
if you have a book, whether it's 100 accounts or whether you have 3,000 accounts, make sure that we're going after our lowest hanging fruit, our smartest accounts first. I would tell you just one easy way to segment if you haven't yet. Um, take a, a tool set, a tool like um, LinkedIn Sales Navigator um, and create a list and just go through, right? Look and see where people have changed jobs over time. Segment out, let's say, your, your highest uh, vertical um, uh, that does work with you and then start to look and see, have people moved from our existing clients or best clients to our target list? Because even tracking those job changes and the brand awareness that comes with that is huge. If you have a book of 3,000 accounts and you're like, that's adorable, I can't do that. Again, start by segmenting from a vertical perspective, right? And going from there, looking for common connections with executives, et cetera. The next thing I would say, we, we get this question all the time. Quality, quantity, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to hit this all, right? It is a lot of work. I think it's just a it's also a mind shift of the reason we used to do quantity so much is because it took that much quantity to be able to convert, right? So if I send a thousand emails and if I get a one percent response rate, right, then why would I send a hundred emails to get a one percent response rate? The thing I think that with this mind shift is that the quality pays off. If you have done the work to figure out your buyer persona and then the people around that buyer persona to reach out to, that's what I would target. I would target, again, depending on the size, right? But if you have like upper SMB and up, find two or three accounts in the exact same vertical, right? So that you're just basically saying the same speak over and over again. You don't even have to shift from oil and gas to tech or whatever. And do your quality outreach. Set a goal of sending 20 fantastic emails this week. I just want to say also, doing that research, connecting the dots and knowing what to write is a muscle to build, right? So it's like, it will eventually maybe take you five or six minutes to do one show me, you know me, maybe even less, but it's like saying, you know, I'm, it takes me 15 minutes to run a mile. Okay, cool. Well, that's today. It's not going to take you that hopefully in a month or two or whatever. You've got to build up that efficiency, but I would say just start to, to, um, uh, test right in, in terms of the quality. I always mess those two up. Um, the quality, uh, try that show me, you know me in three of those similar vein accounts do that together. And then also the other part about scaling, um, I think you'll find just that sending less emails will net you better results. But in terms of scaling, like let's say we're going after, okay, what do I do like for a General Electric, an Exxon, a Salesforce? This is where the company information, the quotes from C-suite, um, things like that are really helpful. So go and find, you know, like there's so many fantastic podcasts. Um, there's a great one, of course, that's escaping me right now. Um, Grit. Uh, look at the Grit podcast. Grit, you know, in, in, uh, interviews a bunch of great executives. Pull a quote from that. Find a bunch of people that report to that person or report down one, one person and say, you know, your CRO, Matt Brown, just talked about this. I love this quote from your CRO, Matt Brown. What, what, what did Matt say? They probably won't even know because they didn't even listen. And then just talk about that, right? And then you can send that to 40 or 50 people. And there's no way they're not, they're not going to send each other an email and be like, wow, look at this email from Sam McKenna. And if they do, amazing, right? Just change the vernacular a little bit, right? Change a few of the words. Hello, hi, good morning, good afternoon, whatever. So it seems like it was custom written for them, even if it, if it quite wasn't. Um, and I think you'll see a lot there. Last thing, the higher you go, the more I would focus on the human. So if I am targeting a CRO at a $500 million company, I'm just going to do the work because odds are it'll pay off. And even if they don't want to talk to me, they're going to they're going to refer me to somebody below them which is going to open a door for me instead of me going to that below person and then working my way up to the CRO. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thanks, Matt. Great to meet you. Thank you, you so too. much. Thanks. Cool. Good questions today. I feel like we're getting through a, a good, a good chunk of stuff. I know. I'm trying to fit them all in because I know we have more coming up. Um, I'll talk faster. One... Go. <laughs> this one is a little bit off um, topic, but still, we thought it was a really great question. I have a mock disco presentation for a third interview coming up on Tuesday. They have given context and prospect titles and companies so I can properly research and prepare. I saw Sam posted on discovery yesterday. Would you suggest I prepare a couple of slides or just have the conversation? I want to stand out. Have the conversation. Um, I would say it, de it depends. Um, and I think you're going to, um, <sighs> I'd use a little EQ on who you're interviewing with. If you are interviewing with, you know, a super old school organization, if you're interviewing with people who might have been in sales for 
20, 30 years, it, just kind of judge your audience. And I say that because there are people who, who love kind of those traditional methods and they're like, she didn't even come with a slide deck, right? Like that's ridiculous. We're not going to give her the role, particularly if you're kind of in more, again, like stodgy or um, verticals, if you're in manufacturing or things like that. Um, I think the not being prepared with a slide deck could be, um, uh, could be a turnoff, right? Could make you look unprepared. Now, I do think on the flip side, you can show incredible preparation uh, with, you know, notes that you bring in or say like, obviously, because we're remote selling, I can have little crib notes in front of me um, in discovery calls when I have those. So I, I put some notes here, but I'd love to start this conversation and use that, use that script that I gave you. I think you will also knock their socks off if you do that, right? By saying that kind of open-ended question, I could tell you a few things about us. I'd love to hear about you first one, two, three, four of what you know about them that kind of show me, you know me and representing that, that um, research in advance will knock their socks out because it's so atypical that they'll get a question like that. And it's so open-ended and they'll let you run through it. I would just say, um, take advantage of the shorts discount, go and listen to the perfect, if you just buy one thing, perfect discovery call, um, uh, short, I think it's like 39, 49 bucks, something like that. You'll have a discount. Go and listen to that because I will. I give you the exact framework that we charge a lot of money to, uh, to charge uh, to teach organizations how to do that, and I think that will really set you up for success. If you do want to come up with a few slides, I think that's fine just to show the preparation, just in case if you get in the room and they're like, uh, "Where are your slides?" and you're like, "Crap," um, then you'll have those prepared. But if it were me, I, I never have any slides for a discovery call because it's not about me; it's about the buyer, and I'm here to learn about them and make sure that we can solve their challenges one way or the other. Great question. Good luck. Keep us a quick note before you go virtually, anonymously. Um, make sure you send a thank you note afterwards. This is a big debate right now. What to do? Um, send a thank you note. Send a, a thank you email to each one of the individuals. Make sure it's everybody. Do not just send it to the hiring manager or whoever the most senior person is in the room. I would individually send a note. I think it's such a nice touch. And if you really, really want this job, and if it's for something important, I would look for a way to send a handwritten thank you note as well. What a great way to stand out. Um, ask for their, ask, you can ask the recruiter for the best mailing address for them. It'll probably be the corporate HQ, but it's a signal that you're going to send something. So even if it takes a while to get there, the recruiter will probably say, I think they're going to send you a handwritten thank you note. What an awesome way to stand out. And nobody does that anymore. Okay, now uh, moving on to subject lines. Can you share Woo. more advice on subject lines? Long, short, super personal. What's the format? I think, I, I, again, I, there's so much data out here, right? So so take my advice with a grain of salt. This is just my way. It's not the, there's no the right way. What we have to also remember at the end of the day is we're selling to people that are very different. They're not robots. They're not machines. They're people. Here's my thought. So I think at least have one show me, you know me. If you can have two in there, that's great. I would do something like if you were, if you were going after me, um, you know, I've worked at LinkedIn. I have a bunch of uh, common connections probably with you. I grew, I've Swiss, you know, I grew up in Switzerland. That's right there in my headline. If you said something like, if you put Lausanne, which is where I'm from in Switzerland, if you put Lausanne plus Nickelodeon, I was on a game show when I was a kid, um, plus whatever your company name is, I'm going to open up that email, right? If you put maybe like, I, my dream is to visit Lausanne, plus I have to know about Nickelodeon, plus your company name longer, that's really okay too. I don't think that the the subject line necessarily has to make sense as long as you're kind of hitting those headers like Luzan, Nickelodeon, and your company name, because I know where I'm from. I know about Nickelodeon. I don't know about you, right? So it'll intrigue me to, to basically open up that email and then to take a look. And then again, just make sure you tie the dots. Also, it does not, everything on Show Me You Know Me does not have to be front loaded at the top of the email. So sometimes if we have two or three things, right, I'll say one thing. I'll get to the heart of the email and then I'll say PS XYZ. And I'll tell you just on the, the sports stuff, like um, I, I'm not big into sports. I know nothing about it unless it's tennis and then we can talk all day long. Um, but I also just kind of use it to be cheeky. Like um, my husband went to Kentucky law school, but like bleeds for the, the cats uh, for Kentucky basketball. And so when people are even inbound leads for us and went to Duke, um, right, which is a big rivalry school. I'll say, you know, I cheer for the the Kentucky Wildcats. I saw you went to do. Hopefully, we can still be friends, right? Like, it's a great way to just be like, oh, oh, bring it on. Some people are like, what is it? What? 
and they have no idea, but that's okay. Just, you can add it as a PS there, right? Add a little humor, add a little cheekiness, et cetera. Um, like other people said, have some fun with it. I have a good story about how making a joke about Duke almost cost me my job at LinkedIn. But again, I will save that for another, came full circle in a very humorous way, but um, I'll save that for another day. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Thanks. Thanks, Paige. <laughs> Okay, we have another question coming on live. Mike Kennedy. Hi, Mike. Woo-hoo. Lots of live questions. I love that you guys are brave to come on camera. Eager anticipation. Sorry, it's Mike. Ma- so we've got two people coming up as panelists. <laughs> oh, cool. Awesome. <laughs> Hi, Mark. How are you? Long time to see. Hi, Sam. It Hi. is. Always nice, nice to see you. Nice. Um, before, before I get to my question, uh, I do have a success story to tell you, and oh, it, in, it involves our, uh, mutual friend, Matt Green. Oh, love, 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 love Matt Green. I, uh, was trying to reach out to, uh, uh the CEO at, uh, Mindful Communications, mm-hmm. and I dug down and found that, uh, Matt had sent her a bottle of champagne for her hey. new job. Has Matt That's sent nice. you any champagne ever? <laughs> Uh, Matt has Matt hasn't sent me champagne. He has. Okay, so there uh, there's that. See now that now we've got good show me your know me there. Yeah. And so <laughs> I put it in the subject line was uh F O M, Friends of Matt Green. And I did that on Friday. Monday morning I got a response back saying, I love F O M friends of Matt. <laughs> super, super smart. I love I love the the comic connection tie there as well. Great, great work. Yeah. And but unfortunately, they're going through some uh, restructuring and transition. She says, contact me in a couple of months. So I've got that as a follow up uh, coming back in May. But cool. awesome. Yeah, so my question is, um, as I'm reaching out to magazine content, I have some information about their circulation. Yeah. At what point do we bring in statistics? So if you are, you know, you hate to come up with someone and say, I notice your magazine has lost 20% of the circulation. Are you concerned with that? Um, yeah. I think they know that. I think Jason Bay had a comment. He says like, no shit, Sherlock. We already know about that. <laughs> yeah. But it is something that I want to try and address. It says, if you are starting to see people going away, what about other people that can fill the void? And if other people don't know about that. And so, what at what point do stats come into play? I think so, such a great question. So I think a, I think a couple of things, Mark. So um, let's think about stats a little bit outside of the questions you're asking um, first. So a lot of us love to use percentages, right? We we see this in every almost every first email we get. We can increase your pipeline by thirty eight percent. We can clo- you know improve your close rate by five percent. We can improve this by percent 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 percent. Well, no, you can't because you don't know. You don't know shit about us, right? You don't know our business. You don't know our revenue. You don't know our close cycle. You don't know anything, right? So you're just pulling, let's say your average or your top percentage or whatever. What a turnoff that is to buyers. It makes them feel, right? Like this isn't a bespoke solution for them. And you're just like, you're just like everybody else. Everybody feels like they have a unique situation, solution, value prop, et cetera. So the more that we can do, right? To use stats, to, to, to not use stats there, right? But to, to talk, even to talk about that in a different way. So we might say, like we might send an email to say, we suspect that you're like many of our clients and that your open rate is less than 6%, you know, or 8% of your emails. And then your response rate is around industry average um, under 1%. We can help improve that in a dramatic way. The average that we see is 43%. Sky's the limit of what we could do with you. We want to make sure that there's some flexibility there. But I'll tell you, percentages and stats really don't come in until my email is four, five, six, something around there, right? And that, that midpoint. I think on the stats from your perspective, right? We might think about that from attrition. We might think about that, think about the stats in a negative way, right? Losing 20% of your, your audience, your subscriber base. Holy moly. Um, so I would think about when we say that, what is number one? Can we display some empathy, right? I know, I know you like many organizations are going through right now where you're losing subscriber base, which is obviously so frustrating. One of the things that we can do to help you improve that 20% gap, right? What I recently saw published um, is X, Y, Z. So that empathy there. And then also saying like, we see this happening a lot. We're experts. We know the space, et cetera. Here's a tangible, practical, actionable thing that we can do to help you. Again, that email, right, is to bait the buyer. So we don't need to sell them on the full solution, et cetera, right? We just need to make sure that we've got something. We show that research and that stat. 
And then we show something to be able to tie what we can do to get them to say, that seems interesting in theory. We'd need to hear more to see if it's a fit for us. Um, and then, and then to be able to go from there. So I would say, Give that, give that a go, right? Just remember the empathy. Um, I think the, the new shit Sherlock is right, but like, so what is the thing I would say right afterwards? So you've done the research, point it out, be empathetic, and then think about the so what of what you can do to help them. Yeah, just really trying to get more people about, you know, if you're not familiar with this particular magazine, you're not your ideal customer profile is this, but what about the people outside? I mean, that's why when you go to Costco and they're sampling something, you might not, I'm not really a sushi person, but it's a free sample. I'll try it. And hey, this isn't bad. And now I've got a sale. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Think things I will never sample. Costco sushi. <laughs> well, I won't either. But, but, I, but Todd Capone right. has now got me thinking I can't go into Costco without thinking about Todd. So anyway. that's right. Okay. Um, great to see you, Mark. Thank you for thanks, thank you. For, thanks, Mark. Thanks for your question. See you later. See you later. Uh, I think we've got time for one or two more. Um, Mike, we'll take your question. Uh, great to meet you. And Laura. <gasps> Laura. Sorry, sorry, Mike. I didn't respond to your name like I did to Laura's. So maybe next time. <laughs> my name. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, uh, my name's actually not Laura. That'd be a very interesting looking Laura. That's actually my boss. <laughs> Sam's. We we kind of adore your boss, so so you're you're in good company here. How's it going? Uh, I'm going. I'm doing well. It's Friday. Uh, I'm working from home today, so excuse the poor lighting and the awkward, you know, green screen in the back. But uh, yeah, I have this email that uh, uh, pretty much the standardized template that I'm using for most of our uh, inbound sequences. So at yeah. now, yeah, we just have um, just pretty much different uh, marketing content whether it's white papers, case studies, uh, how-to guides, for example, that we're all individually creating sequences for. So yeah, I would love to share my screen with you guys. Let's see it. Yeah. And just so you guys know, we're going to take um, this question and then we'll take mics and then we'll wrap up. So we'll go a few minutes over today, but feel free to stick around if you can. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's see your email. Cool. Yeah. So can you guys see my screen? We can. Yeah. Perfect. So here is my first email and yeah. Um, the report that they downloaded is their KOL planning and engagement industry report. Uh, do you guys want me to read this out loud or you guys want to read in silence? I don't know. No, good to go. So a um, couple of quick quick pieces of feedback. Um, so think about the that subject line, right? That's that's what we say every day. Um, there's no show me, you know me in there, right? We haven't taken the time to do our research. Even if we think about, right, like something about the KOL planning engagement industry report, I would say don't do that as your show me, you know me, because they might have downloaded it and never looked at it. I downloaded a bunch of reports from Gong in December, love Gong, um, and I haven't looked at anything. So if somebody says a quote from that or something like that, I'm probably not going to open it. I would say, do your show me or know me, right? Especially for something that could be an MQL, that could be an inbound lead, a contact us, et cetera. What a fantastic way for you to stand out by not just saying, so you downloaded our form, why buy our stuff? No, what a great way to stand out by doing that show me, you know me, finding something on their LinkedIn profile and then being like, by the way, I saw you downloaded our form XYZ that I wanna to talk to you about. I would say, um, Take make sure you do. I noticed you downloaded our, our KOL planning. Take that out as your first line, right? Launch into the show me you know me that you do there. If you don't do show me you know me or you don't have something to kind of launch in there, you can also use our first line, which is always to say something like, Hey, Paige, um, we've yet to be properly introduced. I'm a member of the team here at H1. Um, I saw you downloaded our our paper, you know, or whatever. Um, again, I would avoid saying that, but do the show me you know me. But then you could say, I saw you downloaded our guide. You may or may not have a chance to read it. There's something really interesting about it. I would love to find a time where I can connect myself um, with, with you or I can connect you with a member of our team. The other thing that I would just say here is if you look at um, that second sentence, I, under I understand you work as company as title. It's a waste of space because they know that, right? Like we don't need to say that to them. Um, my favorite on, on these emails is one that Kim on our team received, um, which is rumor has it, you're the head of the VP of strategy and enablement, um, where it's not a rumor, it's on our LinkedIn profile. So it's a, it's a fact, um, but we can take that stuff out, right? And then instead, if you think, think about the always, always, always putting ourselves in the buyer's shoes. We've helped similar teams like yours at AbbVie and AstraZeneca, streamline KOL, identification, segmentation, and targeting. So 
is what is the name of their company? My company. Uh, the company that you're, you'd be reaching out to here. Let's say for for example. Uh, you know, typically like Pfizer, uh, Merck, um, bad device companies like Stryker, Olympus. Cool. Um, I think it's fine to name drop when you've got something that is is tied to that, right? So the re, the, the fact that you're reaching out to Pfizer and you're saying Abby and AstraZeneca, great job. Um, also, they don't care right now. Anyway, they don't care. What they care about is that you're bringing something to the table that can solve a challenge that they have. So this first email is your first impression and your opportunity to say, I want to earn your time. So why should, why should they even get on a 30 minute meeting with you? What are two or three or four challenges that we know that we've resolved for Abby and AstraZeneca? And how can we weave that in for that same buyer persona? Think about this. Like if you are anything like our clients at Abby, if you're anything like our clients at AstraZeneca, if you really want to do a name, one of the things, three of the things we suspect you are trying to solve for this year is one, two, three. We can tackle all of them. The one thing that we could do is X, Y, Z. Give them something tangible and practical, um, right? That they can be like, we do have that problem. This seems like an interesting solution. I'd be interested in hearing more. Because the fact that they downloaded a report and that you work with other people doesn't mean anything. And even if we take all that out and we just say, Hey, we'd love to talk to you about streamlining, KOL, identification, segmentation, targeting. They're going to say, we already do that. Take care. There is nothing here that earns that time. And that is the difference maker in these emails. Um, and then I've got some strong opinions on the, the word, the closing of best. Um, I think it's, a, it's like almost passive aggressive. Um, but I would say just change it to like, cheers, thanks, thank you, something like that. Um, and I think it, it comes off a little friendlier. Gotcha. Uh, thank you so much for the tip. So, I mean, that was a lot. So I just want to <laughs> and be able to share, make sure I got all that. So uh, pretty much kind of take this out, maybe throw it in a bit later, but really just kind of uh, show me, you know me a lot more quicker, whether with it's in the subject title or the first line of email. Definitely take needs to be in the subject line. Make sure, make sure it's definitely, definitely in there. Um, yeah. So considering yeah. that, you know, these are warm leads that are inbounds, you know, at first it was like, First name, you know, thanks for downloading, but my open rates weren't getting as much traction. Yeah. And, you know, I was just, I mean, could you possibly suggest something? <laughs> yeah. I think again, like you're that, that extra effort for an inbound lead, which you might have, I don't know, a hundred to work through in a day. And you're like, how the hell am I going to do that? Just think about your top tier, the most senior leads, the most drool worthy leads to come in. Um, and when Laura hires us to write your sequences, you'll be in, ever, in even better shape. What? Ascent of close? Who said that? Um, thank you so much, Benjay, for, for popping in. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Have a good day. All right, Mike. We'll, we'll, thanks, Laura. Uh, we'll pop over to you, Mike, and then we'll, we'll wrap up today. While we were waiting for Mike to come on camera and unmute, I'm just going to say again, thanks to thanks to Aller. You guys, um, there's so much great stuff uh, on their site and great alerts you can sign up with free and, and both paid. So please do check them out and thank them for joining us today. Um, look at your northern lights there, Mike. You got it. I'm into it. Uh, Borealis. <laughs> Borealis, that's right. What's happening? Um, not too much. I, I have a simple question. I think it's simple at least. Uh, at what point do you boot a prospect to the side? Um, we get a decent uh, open rate, but after sending three or four follow-ups, uh, if they don't open them, they're not going to open them in my mind. What's your suggestion there? It's interesting. I think latest stat was that it takes 19 touches to even get in front of a um, an existing client. <sighs> which is a lot of work. So I would tell you, don't, don't give up after those three or four touches, especially if it's automated, right? We're just doing the work on that first email and then everything else is a drip campaign that you don't have to do. Use a platform like Outreach, right? For example, that, that can let you do that. Um, but I would say, right, make sure every email that you send is high quality, teaches something and compels them to click on something. Again, the win for me, even if I can't get them to respond and take that meeting, is that I'll get them over to our website and get them to become a marketing contact so they can also get those marketing emails. I would just tell you as a quick gut check, right? For anything that you send in that email, five, six, seven, and so forth, Think about those, like if we're advertising a case study, an event, a webinar, a conference, whatever it is that we want them to click on, we need to be able to convince them to click on it. So you saying, we're hosting a webinar, come hang out. 
isn't going to be enough. What am I going to learn? Why should I do it? Why should I give you 60 minutes of my time? Why should I listen to this podcast You know that you recommend? Why should I even read this article? So I think about this, like for even for our sequencing here or our, our nurture campaigns, right? You heard Mark say earlier that somebody responded and said, reach out to me in May. That means he has March 3rd to May to create nurture emails to continue educating that person. When we do that, we need to send out an email that says, thought of you for this reason. When I saw this article, X, Y, Z, here's one, two, one or two things that I think about it, my point of view, my intelligence on it. Hope you find it valuable as well. Because even the art of clicking, the, the, the effort of clicking on one link is a lot for some people, right? We are that lazy in this day and age. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just need to, to convince them to do it. Hopefully that okay. helps. Thank you. Cool. Thanks to you guys. Thank you for joining, Mike. Thank you, everybody. Thank you again, Aller. Please, please go and check them out um, so they will come and sponsor us again. Um, and thank you guys so much for your attention, your great uh, questions and engagement. We really appreciate it. Um, if you are not already signed up for our women's webinar um, and uh, you would love to join us, please do so all on our website. And we will see you guys in April. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.